field, sine, cosine, and tangent, and the inverse of those. Um, the first thing you want to do is draw a right triangle. This is called right triangle trig, okay? Right triangle trigonometry. So draw yourself a right triangle like mine, okay? If we're talking about angle B, which actually is this angle here, it's like the inside one. I should probably put it here and not here, all right? If I'm talking about angle B in that right triangle, we need to be able to label all the sides, okay? So obviously the hypotenuse is this one right here. It's always opposite the right angle. You guys probably know that, okay? And if I'm talking about angle B, then this side right here is opposite of angle B. Makes sense, right? It's opposite of B. And then this other leg here is the adjacent side, okay? It's the last side left, and it's not the hypotenuse, all right? It's next to angle B, but it's not the hypotenuse, all right? So you have to be able to label all the sides. What if I am actually talking about the angle up top? So let's say this is angle B, and I really should put it on the inside there, I guess, okay? So angle B is here. Now, I still have the same hypotenuse. Everybody agree? That is still the hypotenuse. It's opposite the right angle. What side is this now? Yes. This is now the opposite side, and that means that this is the adjacent side. Okay, you have to be able to label all the sides on the triangle. So, this little, this little thing you want to memorize, okay, mnemonic, I don't know what these are called, all right? So Katoa, write it down. So and spelling matters. S O H. So Ka C A H Toa. So Katoa. All right. So what this means is the sine of some angle. I'll say A. This just helps us memorize it. Is always equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And we'll talk about what this means in a minute. Okay. For now, just write it down. All right, and then the C stands for cosine. So the cosine of some angle, I'll say angle A, will always be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent of some angle, we'll say angle A, is always equal to opposite over adjacent. All right, so Katoa. So find... Go back. Yep. No problem. Okay. Um, find sine of C. Okay, so I have this lovely triangle. I'm going to find sine of C. Okay, so first I write sine C. By the way, it's not sin. It's not sin C, it's sine C, okay? All right, so if this is C, this side right here is which one? It is the opposite. This side down here would be the adjacent, and this side here would be the hypotenuse, all right? So first you got to know all your sides. All right, sine of C is always equal to so... So sine's always equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side would be 3.61 over the hypotenuse side, 7.52. And you could divide those on your calculator. A lot of times it's just a nice fraction, like 3 sevenths or something. You can just leave it if it's like a nice fraction. I guess with decimals, you, you might want to divide them because it looks funny, but I'm not going to. Main thing is that you know it's so, all right? Now we're going to find the cosine of angle D. So I have a new triangle now, and this time I want cosine of angle D. So cosine is always ka of the Sokotoa. It's the ka part, C-A-H, right? So if I'm talking about angle D, it's always equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Which side is adjacent right now? Exactly, 3.63. Great. Everybody agree that this side's opposite, all right? This side hypotenuse, so there's the adjacent. All right, so it's always adjacent over hypotenuse. Which side's the hypotenuse? 4.76. Again, 
you'd probably divide those if they're decimals, but if it was like a nice number, like three-fourths, you could just leave it as three-fourths, okay? Usually it's a fraction. It's not usually decimals. Okay, and let's do tangent, of course. So let's find the tangent of E. So you want to memorize Soka Toa. Toa is the tangent part, all right? So I'm going to do tangent of angle E. And tangent's always equal to opposite over adjacent. Everyone, which side's opposite of E? 8.73 divided by which side's adjacent? 11.3, okay? Again, I'd probably divide that if it's decimals, but we're good for now, okay? All right, calculators. So you must be in degrees or this doesn't work. As if you go to your home screen, okay, go to the home screen, then go to settings, all right, and then go to document settings. Notice my angles in radians. That's a problem, all right. We want our angle to be in degrees, so change that to degrees. Yes. Um, a radian is when you count by pies around the circle, which you will learn. Oh, I don't know that one. Yeah. That one's like because it intersects up uh, right angles in one part of the circle. Weird. Go to degrees. <laughs> All right. And go to calculate. Okay, so now we're just going to plug it in, you guys. This is like super easy. You just plug it in. So I'm going to do 3 cosine 45.6. So let's plug in 3. All right, this little button over here that says trig is where all your trig functions are. So it's on the left underneath control. All right, you press trig, and then we just press cosine, not the one with the negative sign, the cosine one. All right, and then we plug in 45.6, and you just write your answer down 2.099, round to the third decimal place. All right, so for these, it's going to take you two seconds to do these. All right, what I say the answer was? All right, booyah. Okay, let's try another one. Two sine 25. All right, so we're going to plug in two. We go to trig, do sine, not the one with the negative one, the sine. All right, and it was 25, right? 0.845. And you write that down. 0.845. All right, there you go. Okay, now we're going to do some inverse trig functions. We have to use our calculator for this. You just have to set it up and solve. So find an angle whose tangent is that lovely decimal point. So the first thing I do is write tangent A. Find an angle whose tangent is 0 0.405. All right, so the way we solve this is using inverse tangent. So it's like when you have x squared equals 25, the inverse of the square is the square root, okay? The inverse of tangent is inverse tangent, and you have to write the little tan negative 1, okay? You have to do it on both sides, and you need to put it in front of the decimal. So these cross out, meet, and now I can find my angle by just doing inverse tan of this decimal which is just going to get plugged into my calculator. All right, so now go back to your calculator. I'll give you a second if you're still writing. Yeah, these are pretty quick if you remember how to do it, yep. Ready? Okay, so go to calculator, go to this lovely trig, and this time I need the inverse tangent right here. All right, so it's the one below tangent. It has the little negative 1, which means inverse, and then we plug it in. Was it 0 0.405? Thanks. Okay, and you press enter. This gives you the angle measurement. Okay, 22.048 is the answer. All right, so A equals 22.048, and you need to put a degree sign, you guys, 
because I'm solving for the angle here. All right, so my answer will be in degrees. Okay, we'll try one more of these. Find an angle whose sine is 0 0.0794. Okay, you must write like this, sine A. We're looking for an angle whose sine is 0 0.0794. All right, to get rid of the sine, what do you guys think we're going to do? Inverse sine, all right? It's called inverse sine when you do a little negative one. You need to do it on both sides. By the way, if you write this inverse sine on this side, I'll count a point off because it's like doing this. If you guys do this, I'm like, I don't know what's happening right there, okay? The square root has to go in front, right? Everybody agree? That's how these are. So make sure your sign's like squeezed in the front, okay? So those cancel and we're basically plugging in inverse sine 0 0.0794, yeah. For the answer piece, yes, not for this decimal, okay? So A, so now I'm going to plug that in to my calculator, or you guys do it for me real quick and tell me what you get. 52.561? No. no? 4.5540. I think it's that one. 4.554 degrees. Oh, 0.079. Yeah, there's like a zero here, you guys. It's kind of weird, sorry. Is that what you did wrong? Everybody got it? Okay, let's move along. Sketch a right triangle that has theta as one of the acute angles. You guys, this is just a symbol that we use to recognize an angle a lot of times in trig. It's called theta. It's like a Greek letter, okay? Don't let it freak you out. It's just an angle. It's like A, all right? Find the value for the missing two trig functions. Okay, you guys, this is like the hardest part. We're going to put a lot of stuff together, okay? So everybody draw your triangle with me. So the first thing I want to do is draw a right triangle. And you can put theta on either piece, but let's all do it together down here so we have the same triangle, okay? It'll set up a little differently, obviously, based on where you put it. But we're all going to put it on that bottom triangle and draw your triangle like mine, okay? So if this is theta, they're telling me that sine of theta is 8 over 17. So remember, so katoa. You might want to write it on your paper to practice, okay? So katoa, this is sine. What we're doing now is opposite over hypotenuse. That means that this top number is the opposite of the angle, and this bottom number is the hypotenuse of the triangle, all right? So if I put my theta here, my 8 needs to go here, opposite of it. And my 17 needs to go on the hypotenuse, okay? Everybody good with that? So label your triangle. Now we need to find the missing side. Good old-fashioned what? Anybody remember how we could find that? Oh, good. Pythagorean theorem, actually. Would be ideal. It's a right triangle. All right, so I, I need to know this side. I'll just label it A for now. All right, so I have A squared plus 8 squared equals 17 squared. Okay, what's 17 squared, you guys? 389? Okay. I was like, oh. All right, then subtract 64 from both sides. Oh, they gave us a nice one. What's the square root of 225, you guys? Good. All right, so this side has length 15 by Pythagorean theorem. So first, this sets up your triangle, all right? The whole point of that fraction is to draw a triangle and find the missing side by Pythagorean theorem. Now it says in the problem, find the missing two trig functions. I, ha <coughs> I have sine, okay? I need cosine and tangent. That's what that's talking about. Find the missing two, all right? So I want cosine of theta, and I want tangent of theta for my answers, all right? All right, if you look at your little... Uh, formula and whatever this is called, okay? Ka is adjacent over hypotenuse, all right? Here's my ka, adjacent over hypotenuse for cosine. Which side's adjacent? 15. Which side's hypotenuse? So there's your cosine, all right? Now tangent is toa, meaning opposite over adjacent. Which side is opposite? 8. Which side is adjacent? And those 
are your two answers. Siobhan? No. If you haven't memorized, you don't have to. It's just helpful. I always write it down when I'm doing it. Okay. All right. Let's try some whiteboards. All right, you guys, find the cosine of B, and let's just make this 8 and don't do decimals to make it easier. All right, this one's missing a side, so you're going to need to do a little math before you do tangent C, because you need that adjacent side for tangent. So do your math first, then do your work. And all of you guys actually practice showing all the steps this time. <laughs> 